This next example is going to be a problem using the conservation of energy, and specifically we're going to be using the temperature energy, so energy associated with heat. As we know, heat is a form of energy, so any object that has heat has energy, and the laws that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, or the conservation of energy, those laws apply to heat energy. So this is gonna be a question that we're gonna apply that rule. So we have a piece of gold uh, at a certain temperature that is placed into a certain amount of water that's at a different temperature, and we're asked to find what will be the final temperature of the system. So here is a little drawing of what's happening. We have the start, we have the water at a certain temperature, 20 degrees Celsius, and our piece of gold 650 degrees Celsius so that we know that at the start the temperature of water does not equal the temperature of gold at the start but after some time has passed eventually if we let the system sit at the end our temperature final of the water and the temperature final of the gold are going to be the same it's going to be the same temperature and that is our TF So what's happening here um, is we're going to need to organize our known values. So let's start off with water. So for water, we know the mass, we know the C value, and we're going to be looking for a delta T value. So the mass, I'm going to take this 1,500 grams and convert it to kilograms. 1.5 kilograms. Remember that's just moving it one, two, three decimal places back. So there's a thousand grams in a kilogram. And for our C value, that's a given 4,200 joules per kilogram. And then our delta T. Our delta T is going to be the change in temperature of the water. So we know we know the water's initial temperature, but we don't know its final temperature. But if we're looking to find a delta T, so a delta T for water is going to be equal to the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So it's going to be Tf minus 20 degrees Celsius. So imagine if we had our final temperature, imagine the gold, um, let's just say hypothetically so we can understand, if the gold um, brought the temperature of the water up to 40 degrees Celsius, so if our TF was 40 degrees, here if this TF was 40 degrees, then we would have a change in temperature from the start to the end, from 20 to 40, that would be a difference of 20 degrees Celsius. And 40 minus 20 would equal 20 degrees Celsius. Um, but that's just a number I'm throwing out there. That's not necessarily the answer to this question. That's just coming up with our formula for T, uh, the delta T of water. So remember that is Tf minus 20. And now let's do the same thing for gold. So for our gold, we want to know our mass, our C value, and our delta T value. So what's our mass? Well, our mass is given in the question, 500 grams, and I'm going to move it, um, our decimal backwards 3, so that we have 0 0.5 kilograms. Our C value is given 130 joules per kilogram Celsius. And I just realized we are missing, uh, we're missing a unit degree Celsius uh, for a water value. And I'll write that out here as well. My apologies. 
So it's the units are joules per kilogram degree Celsius. And then our delta T is going to be the same thing. We're going to look at the T final and subtract the T initial. So again, if this were 40 and this was 650, um, our delta T would actually be a negative number. So for our hotter for our, our hotter object, the delta T is going to usually be, or always be rather, it's always going to be a negative number. So delta T gold TF minus 650 Celsius. So if our T final was 40 minus 650, would equal negative 610 degrees Celsius. And notice that it's going to be a negative number because our temperature is dropping. So we can keep that. So our temperature is dropping, it's going to be a negative. So delta T is TF minus 650 degrees Celsius. So now that we have everything set up, we have all our variables organized, let's look at the formula that we're going to use. So it's going to be a form of the conservation of energy, where energy of the water is equal to the energy in the gold. So remember our formula here. We need the mass of the cold times the C value for the cold times the delta T value for the cold is equal to negative M, so mass of the hotter object, times the C value of the hotter object, times the delta T of the hotter object. So now we're just going to be plugging in these values into our equation. So for the let's start with the water. So mass 1.5 kilograms. One point five kilograms and the C value for the water was four thousand two hundred joules per kilogram degree Celsius. And then the delta T was TF minus twenty degrees Celsius. Minus 20 degrees Celsius. And that's equal to, and I think what I want to do, I'm going to keep these in blue for now. So we can just see that these values are still um, carrying down. Um, and then negative, the mass for the gold was 0.5 kilograms. The C value for the gold was 130 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. And the delta T is TF minus 650. TF minus 650 degrees Celsius. All right. Now, we have our unknown, remember our unknown here, TF and TF. It shows up in our equation twice, but it is T final of water and the T final of gold, which have both the same value of TF. So we have one unknown that we're going to need to isolate in this equation. So... Before we do that, we're just going to have to start multiplying these terms together. So um, follow along with me, and I encourage you to try these in your calculator as well. Um, but multiplying our 1.5 in, we're going to be getting 6,300 kilogram joules per kilogram degree Celsius times the TF. TF. I'm going to put this in purple so we can keep track of our unknown. And then our second term, minus, 
can be these two multiplied by the 20. So that will be 126,000 kilogram joules degree Celsius over kilogram degrees Celsius. So that's our two terms on the cold side of our equation. And moving on to the hot side of the equation, we're going to have negative 65 units kilogram joules per kilogram degree Celsius times Tf. Again, this is our unknown value. Plus, because we're going to have this negative multiplied by a negative, so it's going to be a plus. 42,250 kilogram joule degree Celsius per kilogram degree Celsius. And now you'll be able to see that we have some units that are going to cancel out. So on this first one, kilograms and kilograms will cancel out. Second one, kilogram, kilogram, degree Celsius, degree Celsius, kilogram, 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 degree Celsius, and degree Celsius. So this term becomes 6,300 joules per degree Celsius times Tf minus and then this term here I'm going to bring to the other side of the equation uh, to be along with this and this term here I'm going to be bringing to this side of the equation so we're going to be rearranging things and the reason for all this is to isolate our TF so we want our TF terms to be both on this side of the equation so our second term here is going to be here bringing it to the other side of the equation it's going to become a positive this will become positive 65 joules per degree Celsius times Tf. And that is equal to, first I'm going to write this term, 42,250. Uh, sorry, the units were just joules. And then this term here, we're bringing to the other side of the equation. And since it's a negative, on this side, it's going to be a positive when we bring it over to here. So plus 1, uh, 126,000 joules. Now the next step is we're going to factor out this TF from both terms. So we're going to have TF of 630 joules per degree Celsius plus 65 joules per degree Celsius. And that will be equal to 168,250 joules. And that's these two added together. So adding these two, we get 6,365 uh, 6, joules per degree Celsius is equal to 168,250 joules. Now all that's left to do is take this term 
bring it to the other side of the equation and we have our t final isolated. So t final is equal to 168,250 joules divided by 6,365 joules per degree Celsius. So dividing by joules per degree Celsius is the same as multiplying by degree Celsius over joules. And that's how our degree Celsius can come to the top. Because again, if we had joules over degree Celsius, it's the same as multiplying it by the inverse of degree Celsius on the top. And with this being the case, our joules cancel out, and we're left with a TF is equal to 26.43, and our units are degrees Celsius. So our T final, our final answer is going to be 23 degrees Celsius with two significant digits because that is the number of significant digits that we were given in the question. This is two significant digits, two significant digits, two significant digits. And just to complement our final answer, I'm going to write a sentence saying that the final temperature of the system will be 26 degrees Celsius. And that is the solution to this problem.